Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at Monza, previewing the race of course but also taking a look around this very famous and historic circuit, looking at the challenges that the drivers and perhaps more specifically the challenges the teams face in getting a really quick lap from an engineering perspective around this brilliant track. Okay then, it's a circuit all about top speed, it's all about maximising your straight line speed which means the exits of corners are critical. Coming down here, this is the start finish straight. I'm actually going to reverse that back a tiny bit. The start finish straight, one of the longest, one of the fastest, which means that this braking zone for turn one is one of the most critical. It's one of the biggest braking zones on the F1 calendar because you're coming down from such a massive speed to down to a very, very low speed for this first chicane. Really difficult, really difficult to navigate your way through this, particularly as we get to the exit, as you'll see. It caused me endless frustration yesterday. Right then, from that maximum speed, you're braking as late as this 100 meter board. Here, you can see it on the left-hand side, stamping on the brakes. Now, at this point, with the car under its maximum aero load, it's being squashed down to the tarmac. The suspension or the ride height may well have dropped something like eight or 12 millimeters even, depending on all the various factors that play into this, between its original setup height and the, the height from the ground that it's at at this point on the racetrack, because the aero load is forcing it down particularly at the front end, you'll see the high rate cars scraping, sparking from the skids on the front of the floor, pushing the front end down as low as it can get. Because when you do that, you squeeze the, the whole car down lower, it gives you less drag. It also can end up producing more downforce by squeezing the air through that tiny gap at the front of the floor, which then in turn maximizes the speed of that flow and then the efficiency of the diffuser out the back, which is exactly what we need as we come into this braking zone. So stamping on the brakes then as hard as you can, keeping the car in a straight line all the way down past the 50 meter board, scrubbing speed off. Brakes and tyres are relatively cold at this point because of that long straight of course, but by the time you get to the turn-in point, somewhere around here, the front brake temperatures are up well over a thousand degrees in such a short space of time. You see them glowing red on the TV cameras. At this point we've scrubbed all that speed off all of the weight has transferred onto the front axle, giving us a nice turn in, hopefully, where we get loads of grip from those front tyres. We can sling it in here. Now the car's pitching over to the left-hand side. You don't want to take too much kerb, because the car's so on the limit at this point, those kerbs are pretty brutal at this first chicane on both sides and can really pitch you off, you know, upsetting the balance of the car, particularly as you get to this point, where you need to get on the throttle as early as possible. The exits are crucial, but if you're clatter clattering over the kerbs and the rear wheel's not in constant contact with the surface of the tarmac, you start to spin those wheels and you start to spin the car, as you saw me do earlier. Getting the power down is critical because then we come through a flat out section of the racetrack where it's all about maximizing the speed. Keeping the car through as, as tight a turn through here as you can, but the, least, the path of least resistance. What you don't want to do is scrub speed off by turning the car too abruptly as we head down towards this next interesting chicane. Now similarly for this one, we are leaping on the brakes around about the 100 metre board. Ooh, I'm in reverse. <laughs> leaping on the brakes around the 100 metre board, having to move the car over to the right hand side. Scrubbing the speed off again, try not to lock tyres again, they will have cooled massively. Tyres and brakes at this point because of the high speeds on the straight. Now here, we chuck it in, we can use a lot more curve on this one, you can see they're much flatter. Again, through this uh, right hand here, don't take the sausage curve because that will throw the car into a spin, but use that curve and then look here, how close the gravel trap is to the exit of this chicane. You have to run out wide, but run out too wide by just a few centimetres, you're in the gravel, you're lapsed over. These curves, the coloured green, white and red curves on the left are serrated, and if you run too far whilst you're putting the power down, the car starts to oscillate, you lose traction again, you'll start to spin up the rear tyres, which is not what you want because, again, exit critical, you've got to get the power down without spinning the wheels up to launch you forward into a, a highest maximum speed possible as we come into these. The two Lesmos, the first Lesmo a little bit faster than the second one, so turning in quite late, late apex, really quite fast through here, again, there's a gravel trap, 
to your left hand side but you need to run out and use that curb power down again flat out the car here leaning over to the left hand side of course through both of these turns pitching over to the left hand side compressing the left hand side suspension you can't have too much of that you can't have too much roll and that's where your anti-roll bar plays a massive part in this finding the right balance a fairly stiff anti-roll bar so that we don't get too much pitch which will upset the car of course but also we want a little bit to be able to transfer weight from one side to the other to lean on those left hand tyres to give us the grip that we need at these high speeds coming out of these two Lesmo corners. Just look as we exit the second Lesmo at that long long straight in front of us so again as with all of these corners it's about getting the power down minimizing wheel spin loss of traction we've got a drs zone coming up so it's about getting that power down quickly but without being too aggressive open the drs as soon as we can over that line and then blast down through the trees little bit of elevation change but nothing too much to worry about again we're reaching massive massive speeds down here and then under the bridge we're looking for around the 100 meter board or this red advertising hoarding here on the left hand on the right hand side that's where we're going to be breaking for Ascari, a really tricky part of the circuit. There are only 11 corners on this track, the rest of it's all just flat out straights. But those 11 corners, all of them can lose you or gain you massive time, both through the corners, but also with the straights that follow on from them. With Ascari then, we want to be over to the right hand side, it's quite a fast corner this one. Leaping on the brakes but not too much, probably only dropping down a couple of gears, so a little pitch forward in terms of weight transfer onto the front axle, allowing us to get that turn in. We're gonna go flat pretty much over these, this first curve. We can take a lot, not the big ones there on the left, but use as much as we can. Don't use too much of this curve because there is a sausage curve very close to the right-hand side, which will spit you off very quickly. So running straight through here, try to straight line it as much as we can and get that power down. Again, use a little bit of this curb, trying to straighten the car up. That's what we want to do here, get the car back in a straight line because that's how we get the best traction out of it. All the time the steering wheel is anything other than straight. It's putting a, bit, a little bit of, of pitch or roll into the chassis itself. When you turn the steering wheel, the chassis twists. It puts different loads across the rear tyres. It transfers weight diagonally across the car so if you're putting the throttle down with the steering wheel turned in any way shape or form you've not got the rear end of the car level and the two rear wheels with their greatest contact patch and equal loading to be able to get that power down so out of the scari you've got to straighten the car up not pointing down the straight pointing out towards the exit before you can get the power down hard early as you can run out towards that curb not too far over it and then we are flat all the way down this straight giving it everything you've got before we head down towards Parabolica. Again, maximum speed down here. This is a very, very fast turn. We have a dab on the brakes around about the 50 meter mark, so late. It's not scrubbing off too much speed because this is a fast corner that goes on and on and on. Tight on the uh, uh, entry part of the corner and then opens out. But again, we head onto that start finish straight, DRS zone. So it's absolutely critical to get the fastest exit speed possible. Now it's not a circuit where tyre temperature generally plays too much of a role because there's so much opportunity to cool them down down the long straight. But para Parabolica, well that's a different story because this is a corner that goes on for a long period of time and you are now leaning heavily on the left hand side. The, the left rear tyre particularly taking massive punishment, building temperature all the way around this and it goes on and on and on. You're going through this at high speed putting a huge amount of load through the left hand side of the car gradually the temperature builds and builds and builds and if you're not careful you can very easily overheat the left hand side of the car by the time you get towards the end of it shouldn't be too much of an issue as I say because of the opportunities for cooling but running it out wide again burying the throttle as early as you dare and on we go opening the DRS as soon as possible back onto this long start finish straight and we start another lap of this brilliant famous historic fantastic circuit
Well, that's what a hot lap looks like, uh, or at least it's what one of my hot laps looks like. <laughs> Such a frustrating circuit because one tiny mistake in one of those few corners that there are can cost you so dearly, can cost you for such a large percentage of the overall lap time because you can lose so much time leading out of those corners along the long straight. So really difficult circuit to get right. I know that that hot lap, there was so much time left on the table there, but I found it so hard to be consistent into every one of those corners. And that is a genuine challenge for the drivers. It's also a real challenge for the teams because whilst you want minimal downforce, I mean, as low downforce as you can get away with to maximize your end of straight speed so you don't get overtaken by the cars chasing you down those straights in a slipstream you also have 11 corners which require some downforce as well as the mechanical balance to get you through those as quickly as possible as well and get you onto those straights with the uh, the maximum efficiency so the, the Friday is about setting up the balance of that aero, tweaking what will be a very low downforce package, trying to work out what settings you need, what settings give the drivers the most confidence going into big long corners like the Parabolica. Um, the mechanical balance of how much, how soft your spring rates are, how much weight transfer do you want when you leap on the brakes for maximum speeds, 360 kilometers an hour, uh, I imagine they'll be doing at the end of those, sp those straights slamming the brakes on, rapidly building the temperature, chucking all the weight from the rear of the car, which it was under acceleration, straight onto the front axle. How do you stop those brakes from locking? The drivers will have to be constantly playing with the brake balance uh, around the lap as well. So there are a number of really kind of tricky challenges. It seems like a relatively simple and straightforward circuit. The challenges from an engineering perspective as well as those from a driving perspective, are still significant in that, yes, your mechanical balance to get the best out of these tyres, the middle three tyres of Pirelli's range, um, with fairly significant tyre pressures again this weekend, a little bit like we had at the second Silverstone race to try and overcome the problems that they had at that time around. The tyres go under some pretty, fairly severe pressures here. Because there's minimal downforce, you do find that through those corners, they're sliding around. There's less aerodynamic force to push the car down into the circuit and therefore you get a bit more sliding. And at high speeds, when you're trying to get traction down, it's one of those longitudinally limited circuits where you're limited by how well you can get traction down without spinning up the rear tires and overheating them. And also how good your braking efficiency is. How quickly can you get the car stopped in a straight line to them keeping it level so that you get a level aero platform, a level mechanical platform, so you can then turn it into the corners without losing grip, without locking a wheel. And again, like I say, without losing traction on the exit. So difficult circuit. It looks fairly simple on paper. It's definitely not. Uh, it always throws up a great race typically because there's often, uh, there's massive overtaking opportunities on those long straights. Um, often very hot as well around Monza. Uh, we're at a normal time of year, of course. Uh, what it does miss this time around is the fans. And I've got some amazing memories of racing there uh, with McLaren when we were fighting against Ferrari and the Tifosi, where the, the, cra the crowd on those days when we were arch enemies were like a football crowd. Um, you know, passionate, terrifying at times. There's some great stories in my book about how terrifying uh, that was, if you want to check those out. Um, we're going to miss that this time around. And actually, Ferrari are going to be one of the teams that are going to suffer most greatly around this particular circuit with their lack of power, along with the other Ferrari-powered teams. So they're going to have a tough weekend probably have another tough weekend next time around in Mugello as well, which is another high speed, uh, relatively low downfall circuit. So tough times for Ferrari, but it does mean opportunities for others. So where people like Renault were very strong in Spa last weekend, expect them to do something similar again this time around. I think it could be an interesting race with an interesting outcome too. Uh, Mercedes not necessarily most comfortable with their low downforce package. Uh, I don't expect them to still not be favourites, but just keep an eye out for that. Anyway, enjoy it wherever you're watching. Have a great weekend, folks, and I'll be back very soon. Ta-da.